In this video, we're going to be showing you how to inspect, repair, and rebuild a diesel engine from start to finish. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here, and I have an exciting video series that I'm starting. I've gotten tons of requests since I started my channel to do an engine rebuilding video. And I'm finally doing one. Um, this is going to be probably an 8 to 10 part series. I'm going to try and keep the videos not super long each. And we're going to be going over how to rebuild a diesel engine. I'm doing it on a twin turbo C13 Caterpillar. I know most people probably want to see a C15, which I'll be doing in the future. But right now I'm doing a 13, so I'll try to put this video out. I want to go over a few things before I start the actual video portion. Uh, the video is not going to cover every bolt, every single bearing. It's going to show you how to do, you know, it'll show you how to do one main bearing. And then obviously you would just have to, you know, do the other five. Um, also, it's not going to be going over basic stuff like how to remove the valve cover, um, how to drain coolant, things like that. It's going to be more focused on more of the technical things, the things I really look for while doing a rebuild. Um, and also... This is just how I do it. Every single person is going to rebuild an engine differently. How they do things, the order in which they do things. Um, certain things like torque specs aren't going to change. But, you know, how you clean parts or, you know, how you pre-lube a system or don't pre-lube a system. That's all different based on person to person. Also, before we get started, I'd like to thank Chi Dozy and Amir for donations on the Adept Ape at Yahoo dot com on paypal donation site i thank you very much and on to the video thank you so this video we're going to be going over the disassembly of the cylinder head and removal of the oil pan now on the cylinder head portion i usually go starting biggest and work my way down so i'll remove the air cleaner assembly intake tubes wiring going over the valve cover and then i'm going to be removing the oil pan on the exhaust side, you're going to be removing both the turbos, any intake tubing on this side, radiator supports, uh, pr the pre-cooler. We're also going to be going over the oil pump, water pump, oil cooler in another video. So first thing to do is start disassembling this turbo setup here. And first thing you're going to run into are these compression style clamps. And all the turbos on the cats use this style clamp. And they tend to get pinched and they have a hard time coming off. Best way to get them off is with an air hammer. Just tap it right there. And it'll be loose and they'll all come off. Now, while you're disassembling, always look for missing components or damaged components because many of these will get reused, like the exhaust manifold. But notice that it's missing a nut on one of the studs. This could lead to possibly a cracked exhaust manifold, something like that. So we've removed the turbo. We have removed the valve cover here, obviously. We're looking at the IVA and Jake housings and the overhead. And things to look for, that's rust. And I'm pointing to there. This had a bunch of overheats, so you're looking for indications of engine damage. Now this is your injector harness here. And if you're used to what these normally look like, this is actually melted. That means this engine got super hot. Now I've removed the Jake housings. And since this engine got so hot, we're going to be looking for cracks on the cylinder head when we remove it. Next thing we'll be removing the rocker arms themselves. And it looks like we have some loose adjuster nuts here as well. So we want to take a look at the push rods. Um, you know, check them out. You can check them out before you actually pull them out. See if anything looks damaged in there or bent and then remove them and you're you're really looking for mostly bent ones ones that have contacted the head anything like that so we have removed the overhead we have the injectors popped out and draining next thing is going to be removing the head bolts and there's two head bolt sizes there's these 16 millimeter ones and then the 24 millimeter ones and on this is a c13 as you can see i've removed all the hoses and sensors going to the engine on the c13s the head bolts are non-reusable so 
I like to work from the outside in when removing a head, even though this head's not going to be getting reused. So I'm removing the head bolts from, this is the front, moving towards the back. And then when I get to the center, I'm gonna go to the back and move towards the front. And I usually do the smaller ones first. So now I'm using the larger ones. Now you'll notice that these zip out real easy. These head bolts torque to quite a bit. Um, usually you have to torque turn with a three quarter inch impact gun, but my half inch, which I'm using to remove them, is not even hammering at all, which that's another indication that you probably had some overheats. And these bolts are just really loose, really loose. Um, pretty typical when you see high overheats, you'll see these, uh, the head bolts for some reason tend to loosen up probably because they got really hot and then they shrank again when they got cold. Now. These head bolts are fairly expensive, but they're single use only because they're torque turn bolts. So you can keep the washers, but you're gonna throw all the bolts out and you're gonna get new bolts. So we've removed the head now and you can see burned coolant all over the head. That's another indication you have a cracked head and not gonna come through very easily, but there's a crack between the valves here and this head is junk. So heads off. And we're looking in the cylinders, you can see burned coolant and also fuel from when you pull the injectors. There you go, that's fuel in all of the cylinders. And that's another thing, whenever you see coolant that's burned in the cylinders, you know it probably got really hot. So there's all your cylinders. And this is a pushrod engine, as I've already removed the pushrods. So you wanna take a look at the rollers and the camshaft while you're here. If they're not planning on replacing them, you wanna make sure that it is going to be looked at before you put the head back on. Oh my gosh, there's no oil pump on this engine. Oh wait, that's a C13. These actually use an external oil pump, which sits right there under the water pump. We have your number one connecting rod, and it has assembly grease on it for some reason. I believe the customer may have disassembled part of it before bringing it in. Pointing to the cooling jet there that sprays oil onto your piston. We have your number one, two, three, four. Oh, four is behind there. Five, six, and seven main bearing caps are also numbered. And there's your number six connecting rod. And you have your oil block plug there, which will be getting covered in future videos. And this is the end of part one of this video series.